Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. I am very excited to continue this series on the economics of web handling. In this clip, we will show you why engineering is limited in the quality of the answers it yields, even when recommending engineering variables such as setting tension on a web machine. So what is optimum? Simply put, optimum is the best that there is. It is not merely good enough. It is not merely an engineering recommendation. Instead, it is an economic commendation. So why study tension? Well, this is a web handling series after all. More specifically, tension is the most common of the TNT controls that you will find on web machines. As such, you should find this control setting easy to relate to. Here, we will simplify the analysis to optimizing only one variable at a time, in this case tension. If you can't analyze one variable properly, you will be hopelessly lost on studying a system. But don't we have engineering guidelines for tension, you may ask? Yes, many, and we covered them in great depth in our Web 101 class and elsewhere in my writings. However, while this may be good, or possibly even good enough, it is certainly not best. Engineering recommendations are merely starting points in a three-step process of going from good to better and then all the way to best. As we learned in our Web 101 class, step one is to start with engineering recommendations which are usually wide enough to allow us to build a machine with an adequate tension range, but not nearly good enough to pick a tension setting on that machine. Step two, as we learned, was to look at the web and ask what it thinks about our tension setting. After all, the web is our customer, not engineering. Finally, and to the point, we may decide it is worth it to go to all the way to best, and that requires economics. Along the way, we learn many new concepts. The first being that tension, or any other variable for that matter, is neither good nor bad. Rather, tension is good and bad at the same time. In other words, tension is a scalar quantity that simultaneously possesses both desirable and undesirable consequences and that these sets are inseparable. In short, you must take the good with the bad. Our job is to find the best tension setting and that, of course, means economic optimization. In the following example, we will find the best tension setting for a printer. Bear in mind, however, that we could use the same approach for tension on any web machine. Bear in mind, however, that we are not limited to studying tension. We can use the same approach on any variable on any machine. We don't have the time in this short clip to cover this analysis in the depth that we can on our Web 101 class. As such, the viewer may want to pause the playback at paragraph breaks to think about what is being said. First is the setup. We plot a variable of interest, in this case tension, against the only thing that matters in business, that is, dollars and cents. In the last clip, we outlined how to do that. Second, on this graph, we plot the total of the set of high tension defects. 
In film, this might primarily be necking or, in extreme cases, MD wrinkling. In paper, this is almost certainly web breaks. This analysis, of course, is totally agnostic to web chemistries, web machines, and problem of interest, and so on. You will note that the cost curve of the high tension defects is concave upward, going to infinity on the right side. It must be so. You simply cannot run at the tensions approaching web strength. If all you were concerned about were high tension defects, then you would get the absurd recommendation to run not just low tension, but zero tension. Third, on this graph, we then plot the set of low tension defects. In printing of either paper or film, it would undoubtedly be printer image misregistration. We will observe that the cost curve of the low tension defects is concave upward, going to infinity as tension goes to zero. It must be so. You cannot run at zero tension. Fourth, we can make the observation that you might not ever get to zero registration errors, even at high or infinitely high tensions. That is simply because there are other ways of losing registration beyond having insufficient tension to stabilize the web. Similarly, you might not get to zero high tension defects, such as web breaks, even at zero tension, as there may be other ways to break the web other than simply tension. At this time, we can add the set of high tension and low tension cost curves together. At the minima, we have the economic best tension. Any other tension setting will cost the company more money. Worse yet, it may be that at that economic best tension setting, we have both high tension and low tension defects still remaining. This is why we often get stuck in industry as I teach my students in Web 101. The pleasant knobs, the knobs that the boss allows us to play with, often don't have the power to kill the problem we've been assigned to work on. Come to the class and we will find out what else we can do to improve this. In short, we must find some other knob than tension, if the tension knob by itself does not get us far enough. Finally, you will ask, how do we get these cost curves? The answer is, if you feel the need to quantify the cost versus tension settings, you must do trials. However, as I write and teach, you may not have to. There are many simple ways to know when your tension setting is economically not optimum. Come to class. In summary, optimum in business can only mean economic optimum. It is the minima of the cost versus variable of study. While this analysis may seem demanding in practice, it need not be so. There are many simple ways to know when your variables are not optimized. However, even if you don't choose either explicit or implicit analysis, you can learn much from the concepts taught here and detailed in my web class and other writings. You now know what optimal means. You now know that optimizing a single setting while showing improvement does not necessarily mean life will be great. You may need to move other variables to satisfy the boss or the customer. Thank you so very much for watching this episode in my economic troubleshooting in web handling. In the next episode, we will show you how to find the optimum level of waste in a plant. Not surprisingly, to those of you who follow my work, that optimum amount of waste 
is very likely not zero. Stay tuned to find out why Six Sigma, zero defects, and the customer is always right, can be economic nonsense.